Hello and good morning. Uh, a little bit late today, I must admit recently I've been starting early, but as you can see this is a new kind of setup. And what I was very keen to do is just make sure that everything is up and running and working and stuff. Um, so good morning, my name is Steve Pugh. It is Friday the 9th of April. Uh, I must admit I'm quite shocked at how quick this year is going, but hopefully in, in a good way. And I must admit for everyone, I think because it's been such a busy time but then likewise, we've got obviously recovering from COVID, people are starting to, Boris has his own kind of roadmap that we're starting to grow out. I think it's almost, it's a really interesting time and it's a transition for a lot of companies as we're starting to kind of move forward, uh, I guess, into this new post COVID kind of world. Uh, so what I wanted to do was just introduce you to my new space, which I'll kind of talk you through. Actually, I'm just gonna do one thing. So welcome to my new office. Uh, this is downstairs from where I was previously. Um, what you've got and what it gives me is just a little bit more space to do my online kind of classrooms and tutorials and that kind of thing. And yes, it's not quite perfect. I've been in for about a week now. Uh, but what I'm hoping to do is that as part of the uh, Roadmap MBA uh, business course, which is all there to help teach uh, real world business skills to people uh, across their careers and that kind of thing, is that often when you have an uh, education course and you're really trying to either work on your personal development or kind of, you know, in your own time do it the traditional way, I guess the way I did with books and that kind of thing. One of the things post COVID is that when you can't see people in person to actually do in-person training, often it can be a lot more difficult than it was. So one of the things I was very keen to do was, as well as the kind of 216 page textbook that I use and we send out to everyone on the course, we also do live uh, classroom sessions uh, once a week and also live Q and A's. So every Friday, and you might've seen a few of these in the past, I do a live Q and A where I have five different questions that people have kind of sent in during the week. And the idea is, is that if you are on the course and you've got questions that you want to ask, um, again, you could be in India, you could be in the USA, you could be anywhere in the world. And again, around your own schedule, you can work through the, the textbook, the works book, there's 107 like online videos. But the idea is, is that if you get stuck on a certain topic, you can actually say, look, I don't quite understand this, how does it work? And then within the kind of live Q&A sessions once a week, I then kind of run through it all, answer people's questions. Uh, and likewise on a Tuesday, we had the first one last week, it was actually for, uh, the live classroom session where on the big screen and various different things I'll teach you through and walk you through the whole course and the concept of basically how to grow your business or career. Uh, so my name's Steve today I'm going to cover a bit of an introduction about who I am, who I am and kind of what it's all about. I'm going to talk about why it's important to invest in your personal brand. What is it why and how to do that and, and obviously this for me is, is some ways that I've kind of worked on that. Next thing actually is that I see with a lot of business owners that I work with is that a lot of people want to grow and turn around their companies and obviously you know grow post COVID. But I think it's really important to really kind of know the dream and know what it is that you're aiming towards. So I'm going to cover that and then likewise also know when to say no to actually turn down opportunities as well. Actually turning down stuff is just as important as it is to um, you know, take on work if that's important. Morning Simon, as always, I appreciate the comments. And then likewise, if you comment in the chat feature, it will pop up on screen. So please, nothing rude, but it's part of the interactivity that I can see on the screen behind the camera as well. Next, I'm then gonna go on to uh, communicating your strategy and why this needs to come from the top. So actually from the classroom session that we had on Tuesday, Ashley gave a really good question about how should the strategy come from the leader, <clears throat> and this is a company that has multiple divisions, so if it comes from the top down, or should the leader ask for each division's own strategy to then build on, and I'm gonna explain why it should come from the top, and I'm gonna draw it out on the whiteboard as well. And then last but not least is one that, something that which is kind of re really relevant to me as well, it's all about brand positioning. So this is all about how you position your company, your product, your service, your offer, why you should do it certain ways, but also why you don't wanna play it too safe. Uh, so hopefully if you're free to join us for the next kind of half an hour, it'd be great to kind of have a chat and get to know each other. Uh, free, feel free to comment in the uh, comments if you ask, wanna know about the setup or anything, please just kind of ask. And yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go through these kind of questions. One of the things that I did discover actually is in my new office, I've got a window here. And as of 8.39, it was just beaming light through the window, which is great in some ways, but it ruined my exposure. So I, that's why I was a bit late kind of coming on. 
Okay. So I'm going to start with the first one, which is actually about investing in yourself and your personal brand and why that's important. So for a lot of people, I think nowadays, especially with digital online stuff, when you get to you know, spend less time in person, but even when you do, it's really important that if you have uh, career goals or ambitions, and it could be as an entrepreneur to actually kind of launch your business and do what you want to do, or actually just in your own career, if you know, obviously you work in someone else's business and you know, you're looking to kind of work your way up, it's really important to invest in your personal brand. So what I'm going to talk about is four main key things and also different ways to execute. And the idea is, is just to kind of put it on people's radar for things to consider. And again, that's what this is all about, is that everything we cover within the course or things that we talk about, and there's 216 pages of really good content that you know you can kind of look at, is that some of it will be relevant to you, some of it won't be, but it's just to spark those ideas to help you make that next step. So, so in terms of your personal brand, what is it? So basically your personal brand is almost everything that people uh, see you as, what they think about you, what they t say about you behind your back, your appearance. And actually there's a, something called the ABCD model which I'm going to draw out, which will make sense. And then actually why it's important to invest in that is something that I'm also going to talk about. So you're going to have A, B, C, and D. A stands for appearance. B is behavior. C is communication. And D is digital. So I've just realized that my whiteboard is a little bit rickety, so I'll fix that for next week. Anyway, so in terms of your actual personal brand and everything else, rarely try and consider it in the basically the, the ABCD model, because it just gives you a framework to kind of break down what can be quite a complicated concept, and there's a lot to kind of consider into different things. So back probably about 10 years ago, there used to be in the UK, uh, we have a show called Dragon's Den, which is similar to kind of Shark Tank in the US. And there was a, an entrepreneur in it called James Kahn. And I remember reading, on his, reading his book on the way to Brazil about 10 years ago. And it was about how he really felt the benefit to invest in himself. Because what you've got is that you have a public image of what you do and how you act in your career. And that's still true now. And actually people do judge you on certain things. So in the same way that if you run a business and you have uh, basically an investment uh, portfolio and basically a, you know, an investment in the business to reinvest in machines and kit and physical stuff, you should also actually keep it in mind on how you're going to invest in yourself. And one of the good ways to think about that is all about your appearance. So for every different job has a different uh, almost dress code, you know, different expectations, that kind of thing. If you are the CEO of a major bank, people would expect you to dress differently to a lifeguard, to arguably even a tech entrepreneur kind of thing. There are different codes, but my point is, when you are looking to either do business in a sector or progress your career within a sector, you could be a mid-level engineer who does a good job and you're very technically good, but if you dress like a scruff and you don't really put time and effort into your appearance and actually spend some money to actually, it's the classic joke of dress for the job you want, not the job you have. And obviously people used to joke about Batman, but it was actually, it's a really important thing that likewise, I wear a shirt and jeans, not jeans, suit trousers kind of most days. But for me, this is, it relates to the companies I work within. But for instance, if I worked in corporate finance, this probably wouldn't be irrelevant. They'd expect me to wear a tie, maybe a full suit every day, as opposed to maybe in tech, it could actually be a t-shirt and jeans. But the point is, it's to know how your appearance, um, what is expected within the sector which you work. But then actually invest in that. And you know, if you're pushing for a promotion within the next year, Actually, you know, ask yourself, do the clothes and the way that you portray yourself, etc. will other people see you in that role? Are you dressing for, I don't want to say dress for success, but actually dress as the next level and for the job you're aiming for. And people, it will make a big difference to your kind of career. Behavior is very similar. That if you are pushing for a senior management position in a company, 
if you act the joker and you're a bit of a fool and you like being the kind of class clown and I was there kind of at school, that's fine, but people won't see you as the next CEO. They, you know, you have to almost be a, have a conscious awareness of how your behavior acts and impacts your personal brand and what people think about you. This also links to the next one about communication and digital, because it's also to do with the things that you tweet and you know your, your public presence is what, what a lot of people see. But actually, when you're looking at personal branding, now because so much of our lives is digital, you should actually always have a conscious awareness of what you put out into the world. Do you plant the seeds for what you want people to think? And actually never be afraid. I'd actually encourage you to spend money on things which will help up your game if it links to whatever your goal is for your business or career. So for me, myself, I could have kept doing the live streams in my spare bedroom, but then I moved to an office with a slightly better setup. Then as of today, I've moved to this office, which is a better offer, you know, better um, setup still. But the point is, it's because, you know, within a year, I've gone from a back bedroom to here. But then likewise, but because for me, this is a 10 year goal, I'm going to keep investing, keep, in, you know, kind of learning and that kind of thing. And basically, I think you should too. And yeah, if you're ever trying to think about your personal brand, the big one is actually just to consider what do you want other people to think about you? And this is completely personal, but actually, you know, if you want to be well respected and knowledgeable on a topic and, you know, to be seen as a, a thought leader for your industry, you can actually control these things, but actually, you know, be conscious of the content and what you communicate out, you know, demonstrate your knowledge and experience. Uh, I was approached by a guy called Lee Flanagan this morning about a, a brilliant social media workshop that they're running over the next kind of few weeks because he's really good at it. So actually what he's doing, although they have a, a bespoke financial, financial business, they're also really, really good at social media. So they're using it as a way to demonstrate authority and expert expertise on the topic. And almost they're embracing it. But the point is, you will see people that kind of go above and beyond to help their personal brand and almost their business brand in the new kind of world. And it's just something to consider. So hopefully that was interesting. But if you have any questions at all, please just uh, drop me a message. And Simon, as always, I always appreciate the support. Anyone that comments in the chat, it pops up on the screen for uh, 300 seconds, I think it is. Uh, but it's a way to kind of get interactivity. And then likewise, if you ever have any questions that you want asked that aren't in the plan for today, I uh, just ask and then I will do my best to kind of draw it out. Okay, so my next one is, I actually don't need to draw for this is all about knowing where you want to go. So for instance, I speak to a lot of business leaders, MDs, senior managers, etc., that might have had a tough time at COVID. They're looking at actually how do they take the business forward and what do they do next? But one of the classic issues and challenges that you always have is that everyone might want to solve um, you know, operational problems and sell more, etc. But this becomes especially more poignant as you get a little bit older. But actually, it's always really important to know where you're aiming for, if that makes sense. So for instance, if you have, I joke with people that I have a goal that I want to work four days a month. That's my dream where actually I get to the course to a point where I come in, I do my live streams, we do the live classroom sessions and I really enjoy it. But actually, if I have a million users on the platform who've paid for membership, that will you know cover my expenses etc so that i can live the dream so almost in many ways everything that i try and do i always have that the joke you know the, the four days a month goal in mind to really help launch the course do everything i possibly can to serve the audience help them answer their questions etc but i don't lose sight of that and the reason why i wanted to kind of mention it is that you also find the same with businesses and especially so if you have bigger businesses which actually have staff. And the reason why that's really important to kind of consider is that you could have a five million pound business now with 40 staff and you might make a profit, you might not, but it's almost, you know, you have ambitions to in theory, grow the business, make more money. But the question is that if you are say 50 or 55 or 60, and you at some point want to retire and have an exit because you know that you might have a lifestyle goal that you're after or whichever, it's really important to plan for that and build for that 
right from the start or as soon as you get someone involved. Because what you often find is that you have the MD at the top who has, they might be the, the founder and the owner of the business, but actually they might have ambitions to actually exit and sit on a beach or work four days a month. And what often happens is that they're so entrenched in the business and working, working away that we can actually go in, help build the business, increase sales. But what you're essentially doing is actually making the machine bigger. And I always joke that it's the bigger a business, the bigger the mouth to feed. But the important point is the owner, if they know that they want to retire in four years time, you would actually start to look at your succession planning and your org charts and you look at a whole different facet of the business that likewise if they actually want to sell the business at a certain point as well you kind of need to start planning that years in advance so the same is true with your uh, career and actually I had a chat with someone yesterday that they in the past had tried to actually uh, plan their career achieve a certain goal and it worked which is fantastic they actually achieved that and the, the point is when you actually strategically know what your next step is, so you might want to become marketing director for an international company, say. If you actually plan that out, and we can cover this all kind of in the roadmap, we can then actually start to consider, you know, what knowledge do you need? How should you dress? What do you, what, where do you need to network to get to know these people? But actually you're planning your activity, your lead actions to achieve the goal is we're actually to just blindly go ahead in your career and just keep doing the same stuff with the, the blind hope of achieving the goal, it's, you're kind of shooting in the dark. So it was just something that came up this week that I wanted to kind of share that I thought was worth uh, mentioning. Hi, Simon. Hi, Simon. No, I really appreciate the, I think there's a slight time delay when they come up. But no, you are right that you yeah. <laughs> Listen to Simon Hodgkins. The, when you have the goal of what you want to or trying to achieve, you have to keep that in mind and build towards it. And the, the the point or the comment was more just to a lot of people don't, and it's an easy trap to fall into. So it's just something I wanted to touch on. Relating to that, you also have to have uh, really take consideration on jobs that you accept and jobs that you turn down. So for instance, if I'm gonna switch now because a lot of my audience are freelancers, you have a lot of people that wanted to or have set up their own business. And actually I'll use myself as an example just because I, obviously I can talk about myself without betraying any kind of confidences. But you always want to know the type of work that you want to do and the type of work that you don't. And actually I think there's a transition that when you first launch your business or you launch on your own, there's always an element where Yes, for the probably first six months a year, you're just desperate to make money and survive, and that's completely fine. But when you get to a point where you're kind of self-sustainable, it's really important to then balance your client work, which for me is the stuff that I do for other people to help them grow their business, but never lose sight and lose track of actually working on your own stuff in your own business to help build your own dream. And the reason why this is important is that you can both Yes, you need to have a profitable business that pays your bills and your wages, etc. But if you solely chase the money and chase contracts to do work for other people, the issue is you just you're running on a faster and faster treadmill. That yes, you're earning money, but you're not actually building anything for the long term. So one of the things I'm always very conscious to do is that yes, I spend probably sixty percent of my time doing work for other people because, to be honest, it helps fund all of this. But actually. Yeah, it, you know, I, I make special effort that once a week on a Friday morning, uh, I, I come down and I still get nervous doing this, but I set it up. But this is one of my lead actions that I know that if I want to grow my business, raise awareness of the course and how it can benefit people and hopefully just add some value back. This is something that I know I should do and have to do. So I try and make time for it. And because of that, although someone might even come to you with a lucrative contract that they want you to work with them and pay you X, if it actually stopped my ability to do this and do my own thing and build for the long term, you know, I was joking about it's my 10 year kind of plan, that would be a bad decision. That often when you work for yourself and you have no one else to kind of talk to, it's sometimes it's, you know, it's good to get advice. Um, so it was just something that had come up that I thought was really interesting. That likewise, the same is true in industry, that if you have a manufacturing business and you make uh, component parts or, or whichever, 
you have good profitable business that you actually get good margin on so that when you put the time and effort into make the stuff whatever the stuff is you obviously get paid in return but you'll also be approached about certain jobs where actually the margin might be rubbish and what you can then do is find yourself being what I class as bad busy so it's when you're busy but it's not really giving you anything back it's not helping you build the dream that's a really bad place to be especially if you get caught into like a long-term contract because then what happens is that you're working all the hours God sends and you're not really getting anything in return so the point is for anyone kind of on the course is that if anything ever comes up which um, is good but actually it means it takes you away from your north star your kind of main key goal don't do it okay so the next one I'm going to talk about actually came in from the uh, the classroom session so within this room on Tuesday and Tuesdays uh, three till four we have the roadmap uh, classroom sessions where we go through the course and actually step by step last week's and also this upcoming week was all about the course introduction and module one setting your aims and goals what you want to do and how and it was one of the things that I was asked to do was actually to do live zoom sessions where the same kind of setup but it's via zoom um, I run through the course but people ask questions and they say look I, I don't quite understand this how does this work etc and one of the things which came in from Ashley which was really really good because when you write something like this you know it, it takes a long time and there's so much content that often you can kind of get trapped in your own head where you think you've explained it properly but actually you haven't um, and anyway and this is all to do with communicating your strategy I also apologize if my handwriting is terrible, but you know, you get the gist. So in this instance, and this is hopefully where it might be kind of quite interesting, uh, we're gonna use the example of a business which has multiple offices. So you have uh, a, a group and then different divisions or different offices on what they do. And the question that came in is that when uh, this business in particular is sending all the people on the course, what the roadmap does is actually help them build their plan and their ambitions and help them build their own strategy to achieve whatever it is that they're, they're pushing for. And when Ashley asked, should she or they let the divisions come up with their own strategy or should it come from the top and then the others fill in? So I'm going to explain why I gave the answer I did and then hopefully draw it out as well. So my belief, actually no, I'm going to do it the other way. If you have, if you're the business owner and you've got multiple divisions, multiple staff who all have their own plan and that kind of thing, if you let them all create their plan based on what they think they should do, what you end up is lots of separate mounds that could overlap you might have a few but the issue is your one two three four five six different divisions might come up with a great strategy which is great for them which helps their growth but it doesn't necessarily fit within an overall vision what you really want to do is that you need to plant the seed from the top and the way I'm going to draw this out it's like a mountain flag at the top so the MD the big uh, one of my competitors calls it the big hairy audacious goal but actually when you have your big north star goal that you're looking to achieve this is essentially where the owner or the MD of the business uh, should basically say look this is the goal this is what we're trying to achieve so that is the mountain and then when they actually go through to their team to ask their team to contribute different parts of the plan what you can then do is that as people contribute they can support each other they actually know where they're going to so that for instance your sales team when they're looking to build their plan to actually increase sales if they know where they're aiming to that can build on the plan of the finance team to provide a more stable base to help build from they can you know build on the marketing team's plan to help raise awareness and actually the reason why it should come from the top is that you need to set that north star that everyone else builds towards in the example of a very badly built kind of mountain um, as opposed to if you let everyone go off and do their own thing what you could have is just a very flat bit of a mess that is well intentioned but it was just yeah so when uh, Ashley kind of brought in the question last week I thought it was really interesting and again I just it's so important there's a, a topic that we talk about in the course called commander's intent and this actually comes from the military where in the military you have the uh, senior management exec level 
uh, approach where they might say, look, we need to take this region in Afghanistan. So they actually set the commander's intent. They tell the team, look, this is what we want to achieve. But they actually let the teams underneath them decide how to implement and how to achieve that goal. So the reason why we, you know, you kind of equate that to sales and stuff in business is that the, the MD could set the goal to say, look, we want to open five offices and get sales to 10 million pounds a year. So that is the goal for the, you know, for the business as a whole. But actually for the sales team, based on the people within the business, I would then within their own plan. So they've been, they would work out their lead actions, which I've covered in previous kind of, uh, you know, ones of these, where people can basically learn how to do, uh, how to build a sales pipeline, how to manage it properly. But at least they're building towards the goal set by the, the MD but they get to choose how they execute it. So this is where some people are very good on the phone. Some people just, some people hate the phone, they like the email, some people like to meet in person. But the idea is you actually let your team execute their area of the plan, how they see best fit, if that makes sense. And then what you're also doing is that you're empowering your team to be, you know, almost look after their own accountability and responsibility, which is what you should do anyway but that also requires less management effort. So one of the big things that I'm always very kind of hot on is running lean and efficient teams and actually just giving people trust and accountability to kind of do their best within their remit. Um, so I know I've kind of waffled on a little bit there, but hopefully it was quite useful. So essentially, yeah, when you set your strategy, set it from the top down and then build upwards on how to achieve that, if that makes sense. But if I have explained it terribly, please just kind of let me know. Okay, next is one which is very uh, relevant. Oh, there we go. So I must, have, <laughs> I always find it funny. Friday mornings, you're tired, you've had a long week anyway. For some reason, this is the point when I decide to put myself on camera. <laughs> it, it is what it is, but it's uh, over time, and hopefully as you see these progress over the next 10 years, they will get better, and I'll get more better prepared and stuff here. But it's, you know, it's, it's, it's always funny to do, to put yourself out there, and it is always quite scary. But actually, I know that for my business, same as when people, everyone knows that there's stuff that they might not necessarily want to do, but they should do, sales calls, for instance. And it's always where I, I take my own medicine. So although I do actually quite enjoy doing these, they are still quite nervous to do. But actually, my lead action is just to keep doing the live Q&As, engage with more people, hopefully add more value. And Simon, I appreciate the heads up about that you think the course is, is worthwhile. So next, I'm going to talk about brand positioning, and most people might not even know what that is, so I'm going to hopefully try and explain it, but then also explain why you don't want to be too safe, if that makes sense. So, I just realised how bad my writing is. So brand positioning is how you position your product or service or company in the market versus its competitors. So the example I like to use, because a lot of my customers are in the UK, so I use UK supermarkets, is that you have different companies at different levels. I'm gonna quickly draw this out. So we're gonna have uh, price and, oh yeah, quality. So when you look at brand positioning for a business, one of the things that's really important to do, it's how you compare yourself to others. And almost then, once you figure out what your niche is, how you choose to fit. So the reason supermarkets are quite interesting is because there's a lot of spread, a lot of people at different levels. But actually, it's something that hopefully a lot of people can almost understand. So if you think about what is a, very, a more expensive supermarket, offers very high quality. I'm going to say Waitrose would be a UK example. And then you could actually fill this out. You could have uh, Tesco's and Sainsbury's, etc. But then just to kind of make the point, at the other end of the scale, and nobody see me from Iceland or farm foods or whichever, but then you have a lower priced option where the quality maybe isn't quite as good as some other stuff. So I'm going to go here. So I get farm foods. 
if you were brought in to be marketing director of farm foods, you should really look at actually when you're looking to promote yourself and who your target market is, it's probably not the same people as Waitrose. And then what it's really important to do is figure out where you sit in this mix, what, make, what makes you special and what's important to your uh, audience. So for instance, for Waitrose, it will all be to do with quality. There is a prestige thing there. Um, and you know, there's a lot of reasons why people buy from a more expensive supermarket. So they rarely play up and hence they're owned by John Lewis, but they've got that partnership that they know their premium ends in the market and you pay a bit more for it. Yeah, if you were brought in to run farm foods, you wouldn't try and portray yourself as a Waitrose-esque business because you would struggle. What their buyers are really interested in is price. It's a completely different demographic. They're probably on poorer parts of the country on local high streets, and actually they have much lower selection. But the reason why, when you kind of map this out, you could change price to uh, availability, accessibility, in which case your 24-hour supermarkets would score highly, but then again, so would a petrol station. And in that instance, although petrol stations, uh, petrol stations often do sell food nowadays, it's not great quality, so they really push themselves on convenience. And that's why it's really important that whatever you launch, and I spent a lot of time thinking about this. So with the Roadmap MBA, you know, I spent years kind of writing it, doing my homework, looking at the competition, looking at traditional universities, looking at the, there are about five or six other alternative MBA courses out there. And it's really trying to understand your vision, your values, etc. But the reason why I think this is relevant is in the past kind of nine weeks, I've been doing a lot of kind of consumer testing because it's when you first get your minimum viable product out there, you send it to people and then start to get feedback. You get a standard deviation graph, which I'll show you what that means, which is almost when you start to get feedback, but then you can learn and improve so that for version two, and as you keep kind of iterating and improving, you can help your business keep moving forward too. So actually, I'm gonna draw this out. So with anything in life, Actually, I didn't need that access. What you tend to get, so that's called, can you still see me? Only just, um, <laughs> so I'm trying to get used to the new studio. So this is a standard deviation curve. And if you look at um, UK heights in the population, you get some people that are very small, some people are very tall, and most people are in the middle. For business, this is exactly the same, you will have uh, people that love your product and you'll have people that hate your product and the trick is it's about three percent at either end then you have give or take 12 percent either side so it's like 15 15 and then give or take about 60 percent of people who are in the middle the reason why it's really important to get your brand positioning right, and this is something that I've, it was some feedback I actually got last night and it had been in the back of my mind for a while, was that with, I think with this, it genuinely is, it's, it's a good piece of, it's a good business course that will help 90% of people make that next step in their business or career. When I was looking at the positioning, the whole roadmap element, because a roadmap teaches you where to go, and obviously since Boris and that, have you started to use it, which is great because it's you know more in the kind of common language. But then when I was looking at the, yeah, there, there are five or six other alternative MBA courses out there. There's Seth Godin's got one. There's one called the Power MBA. There's the Mini MBA Marketing with Mark Ritson, which is very good, but it's just about marketing. But there are a lot of people that do it, and I thought, well, actually, why shouldn't I? Um, you know, follow the same track because what you're looking to do, and yes, it's certified by the CPD, but it's how you, you want people to, when people think about an MBA, they think premium quality business education. Alternative MBAs are, the, you know, an alternative to that, which are generally cheaper, a lot of them are online that help you do that. So that's what I was going for. But the one thing that kind of stuck in the back of my mind, and I knew it as well, was that with some people who for me, were falling about here. Most people got the course and they loved it and like content's great, I like the idea, etc. But I did get some people that just hated the concept and the fact that I was doing what other people have done with the branding about the Roadmap MBA. And I thought fair point because for me and everything that I try and do is try, I try to do high quality, I try and do the best I can, hence why all of the effort with this. But actually what I didn't want to do is have anything within my brand which almost 
still triggered people that aren't going to like it anyway. So from this morning, I've updated all my stuff that this is an alternative MBA course. It, the idea is that if you've got 20 grand in two years to spend on a proper one, do it. They're fantastic. But if you don't, if you've got a real business to run or you're in your career and you've got a family life and you're looking to just make that next step forward, the alternative courses are very, very good. Obviously, I've got one. But the point is, I'm now going to embrace that a lot more. That yes, I'm also going through like a, an update to my brand and stuff as well. But you will see me call it more and be more open that it's an alternative MBA product and it's the Roadmap Alt MBA. I probably will just call it the Roadmap in general kind of conversation just because it's easier. But actually what was interesting was just for my own brand positioning, when you were getting customer feedback, I always had that niggle at the back of my mind and after the feedback from Chris yesterday, and I'd had it before, I thought it's a fair point. So I've now embraced that and this is again part of my next kind of learn and iterate. But again, for your business too, you're always going to have people that love you and you're going to have people that hate you. The trick is to really understand if you are a recruitment company and recruitment is notoriously competitive and very kind of difficult, you kind of need to, in my opinion, you need to embrace who you are, what you do, what you're good at and what makes you unique. And the thing is, even if that res some people don't like that approach, it's really important because the worst thing you ever want to do is that you basically have a sliding scale between uh, safe but dull and then risk. When you're looking about how you sell and promote yourself, if you all you ever do is super safe, chances are you're not promoting yourself as well as you could because what you're doing there is that you're making sure that you don't offend anyone, which is fine and it's honorable, but the trick is you could also become forgettable. What a lot of people do and should do is look at how far you can push it towards here, that where you resonate with your core audience to get a core offer, which some people resonate with, and you're memorable and you stand out and because you know everything is such a crowded marketplace. And what I was doing was testing the boundaries on this. And I think, I'll be honest, I think I pushed it maybe a bit too far and I've dropped back a bit. So it's almost, my, my point is, and the reason why I like to do this on the course, it's almost just, I'm a real person too, and this is a real business and I'm doing this live, as you can kind of see. But actually these are lessons that you could also learn that if you're a copywriter or you do what, whatever you know your business is, never play it too safe with your positioning and also how you kind of promote yourself to the market because if you play too safe nobody will know who you are and nobody will care you can go too risky which is fine if you've got a very niche product which is is built on that but for most people you want to keep your core audience and get them involved without pushing it too far and this was something that i learned uh, well, I've been testing consciously for the past few weeks. It was last night I decided to make the change. And then as you kind of move forward, you'll see me gradually learn and iterate. Uh, I'm just going to read. Hi, Stuart. So I'm just going to read. It's funny. I really appreciate the comments that pop on the screen. But whilst presenting, it's quite difficult to read as well. But uh, Richard Stewart, thank you for the comments. They're all kind of really valid. And it's that kind of thing that I, I will get time to read them properly after I finish and I'll comment and stuff. Um, but I know I appreciate people's feedback. And uh, I'm just going to have a quick read. Uh, Richard, top person accountable for direction. Yeah, spot on. So if you can't see Richard's comment, he's completely saying that the top person should set the direction but can't be accountable for everything within the business. And again, Stuart with the North Star concept is, you know, it's one of those really important things to consider. One of the things which actually came up also yesterday, but it, it's also a key theme is that so I'm a charter mechanical engineer by trade. You can see my certificates in the background. But actually I do this because I enjoy it. I'm passionate about it. I love tech, I love making stuff and I love problem solving and the challenge. But arguably I started my career side by side with people that design jet engines and do uh, thermodynamics and really techy niche stuff. Likewise, when I was doing my PhD, a lot of the team you get very techy. And some of the feedback I also had about the course was it's not relevant to them because they don't sell, they don't do whatever. 
and it was just on that point, I actually think it's really important for anyone in any business to have an entrepreneurial team where actually it, it's so much about the mindset. So for instance, even if you are a technical engineer that does heat exchanges for jet engines, so a very kind of niche topic, when you're actually going through your job and actually you know, doing what you're doing, there's always a reliance on a better business will have team that identify opportunities, have the confidence to explore them. Selling also includes how you communicate an idea. There's a lot of stuff that covers uh, management and bringing on a team. And my point is, although yes, it is a business related course, and admittedly, I also wrote it with entrepreneurs in mind because that's kind of my, my background and skill set. I actually do think that for most people, at almost any point in their career, just having a conscious awareness on how to sell, what is a sales pipeline, how to position your brand and your company, etc. That even if you're a HR director or a HR admin person, just having the conscious awareness of things to consider will add more value to a business that actually, you know, I also give out free copies as well. <laughs> My point is, I think actually business education is, is really useful to anyone. And it was just when I had some feedback that kind of disagreed with that, you know, fair enough, but it was just, I thought I would argue the case. So what time are we on? We are on 9.42. Uh, I've, you know, I really kind of appreciate the, the comments and stuff. Um, although this might be meaningless to you, on Tuesday next week, I have some new lights coming to hopefully help me kind of finish the setup and help take it to that next kind of level still. Uh, I'm still toying with a few different things. I think the whiteboard, I need a stronger one, <laughs> which is good. But, it, you know, this is all part of my journey that I'm trying to just get better, um, even trying to find the right speed on the camera slider that, you know, was here just to make the online kind of sessions a bit more interactive and a bit different, but again, quite difficult to solve. Um, my name is Steve. If you've got any questions at all, you can always drop me a message. We have an email address at questions at roadmapmba.com. You can send in questions about anything 24 hours a day. I pick them up and I'll try and answer them in future kind of sessions. And likewise, a lot of people like to just pick my brains and they just send me a message on LinkedIn, which is cool as well. Um, the offer is still there to have guests on this session. Uh, it's funny that when I ask people who are kind of on the course, and rightly so, and I've been there, everyone's too busy. And it's that classic thing of, um, you know, I'm trying to do my best to build the course and get people on and almost get that extra interactivity there. Um, if you are on the course or, you know, that kind of thing, reach out and I'll happily get you on to talk about your, you know, situation and what you're doing and almost talk through your journey. And we do that live to both, yes, help you kind of promote the business, but also it helps us talk through key concepts which are relevant to other people. Because I think that's one of the other things that I was very keen to kind of create with the roadmap was a way that, you know, everyone's on their own journey. And especially if you're a freelancer or solopreneur or whichever, it can be quite a lonely place uh, to be. Often you are stood on your own in a room doing your, your stuff. So actually just having other people that you can learn from and interact with is really kind of valuable. Thanks, Simon. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, should you wish uh, at least for the first kind of round through, if you'd like to join our classroom Zoom sessions on Tuesdays. So the link is on the website, so roadmapmba.com. If you click on the link, uh, basically I'll let you into the room. And we walk through the, the modules on Tuesday. We're gonna be covering uh, basically the course overall. And then likewise, we go through module one, which is all about setting your aims, goals, ambitions, and then understanding some key topics, like the so-called lead actions that we talk about. Um, and basically to set the scene. And then what I do is that I repeat each module twice because people always have clashes and stuff that they can't do. So the week after we start on module two, and we do that for two weeks, then module three, etc., And that runs until October. And again, these are completely optional. It's for people that might want, um, you know, some extra handholding to walk through the course. But then likewise, if you're like me, you'll probably just rush through it anyway, or just jump to the bits which are kind of relevant to you. Cool. So I appreciate everyone's time. I genuinely do. I joke with my wife that when I started to do these, I had no comments. Then Simon comments every week. And then it's just, it gradually builds. And hopefully, you know, because I, I record all of these and they go onto YouTube. In a year's time, I might have 20 comments. In another year, I might have 30. And for me, it's just trying to build the dream over time and just kind of see what happens. But I genuinely do, um, you know, appreciate people's time and support and stuff as well. Hopefully this is of interest. If you want to check it out, uh, the Roadmap uh, business course is available 
on roadmapmba.com. If you've got any questions, you know, please kind of get in touch. And then likewise, if you either know someone or you would like to do the course, but you're just not in a position to purchase it at the moment, we have a guest list as well. So that's guest list at roadmapmba.com. And we've had the first few people on that as well. And the whole point of everything I'm trying to do is trying to make business education accessible. So cool. Well, my name's Steve. It is 9.46. I genuinely appreciate everyone's time. If you've got any questions, get in touch. And yeah, hopefully I will speak to you soon. Have a good Friday. Cheers. Bye-bye.